you see a toddler walking around and it just seems so easy and intuitive and natural. But it's actually a really complex problem that evolution has evolved us to be able to do, but it's taken millions of years to kind of get that figured out in a way that's as efficient and as robust and natural. I foresee a day when we've got these machines reliable enough and capable enough to be meaningful partners. There's a sense of wonderment of seeing something do actions that we're capable of doing as humans. They're special, they're a little different. I grew up on a farm and we had lots of land and we had motorcycles, so I got into racing dirt bikes. I love motors, moving parts. It's part of why I became a mechanical engineer and initially I wanted to build dirt bikes and I found the you know, robotics and took that course instead. A dirt bike is this mechanical thing that a human has to interact with. We do similar things with our robot. It's doing exactly what we told it to and we're just testing and it just happens to walk around. It doesn't have feelings but it looks natural and people don't fully understand that it is just a machine, it's just a computer. We coded everything on it. A bipedal robot is a robot with two legs. Bipedal robots that have been produced are really not focused on doing real tasks that are useful, they're just more novelty. So this is Agility Robotics. This is our kind of main office where all the actual engineering happens, where all the design work happens. Right now, there are currently four Cassies. This is the Cassie version three. The basic robot, as you can see, is just kind of like a, a hip pelvis with legs. That allows us to keep the robot pretty lightweight and really do some dynamic things. Bipedal robots are gonna help in a lot of different frontiers from space exploration to search and rescue, a lot of the more dangerous and dirty jobs that we don't want to do. With the Fukushima nuclear power plant, tsunami disaster, if all they could do was go in and turn a couple valves, a lot of the consequences could have been averted. And they asked, like, does anyone have a robot that could do this? And there was kind of just a general no from the entire community. This is our very first prototype Cassie robot that, that we designed and built here. I know it kind of looks like a bird. We didn't design it like that. We designed it for dynamics. It just starts to look more and more like an animal, which I think is kind of encouraging. It's not intentional, but it is hinting that maybe we're getting at some of the reasons that animal legs are shaped the way that they are. Leg of locomotion, and it's something I've been excited about for a long time. It's hard for me to remember how I got into robotics. I've always been interested in building things, and I've always been interested in how machines move. My lab is focused entirely on legged locomotion, on machines that walk and run. And I, I say more specifically, my lab is focused on understanding how walking and running works. Certainly, it's something that people have wanted to do forever. You know, all the way, all the way back to the, some of the first, you know, sketches and drawings like Leonardo da Vinci building automatons and robots. I'd say that it's only more recent than people have had some success. We see these great examples from Boston Dynamics. We see the humanoid robotics community that's grown up. Starting in Japan, Honda Asimo is a famous example. Recently, we've had the DARPA Robotics Challenge, where the hypothesis is that perhaps robots are almost to the point where they're gonna be useful. It was a really good window into what is possible right now. And there were robots that were walking around, and there were robots that were very carefully considering their environment, walking over somewhat rough terrain, climbing upstairs, and there were robots that successfully did that. But they didn't necessarily do it quickly or well, certainly any person could outperform those robots. We designed and built Atreus. We ultimately were able to show up at the DARPA Robotics Challenge as a demonstrator and show Atreus walking and running, accelerating, changing its speed, going to what's something like a human's light jogging pace. No other machine before Atreus had reproduced the human gait dynamics for walking. 
Cassie is a major step forward from Atreus and is very much a step on a ladder of robot prototypes and products that are going to keep on improving and improving. There's a huge amount of work to be done, a huge amount of development. From this point, the robot is, even though it looks static, stable, like it's not doing anything, this actually requires a fair amount of thinking. The robot is figuring out what torque to send to each motor and what pose it should be in to maintain its balance. And it does that so that as you push it and interact with it, it actually responds and has kind of reflexes built in. You can see it transferring its center pressure on the feet as I rock it forwards and backwards. You know, I can kind of give it some pushes forward and backwards and sideways and interact with it. So it doesn't know that I'm actually pushing it. That's all kind of built in reflex. The robot is realizing from its inner ear that it's moving forwards and it shouldn't be. Cassie is on the track of being able to run and jump where a lot of robots, I mean, there's a reason they call it the robot dance. A lot of robots have that more just very slow, methodical design about them. Where we're at now is more kind of like beta testing. We see Cassie as kind of like a platform we can give to other highly capable engineers. We have a really good relationship with the University of Michigan, and we're kind of competing almost internally um, to see who could make the robot do cooler things. So this mural is a little bit the history of the lab up into the Atria series of robots that we call Marlow. We're in the bipedal robotics laboratory at the University of Michigan. This is where my students and I create the science of the future. I like working on the bipedal yes. robot just because when I see the light in people's eyes, when this thing moves like a human, it's it's magic, okay? So it gives you a huge sense of accomplishment. The other thing I like about bipedal robots is the mathematics. It is just hard, but so satisfying when you figure out some of the riddles, the, some of the stuff that's built into humans so naturally from evolution. I try to use the mechanical models of the robot, and I realize that motors are not muscles. Wiring and computers are not the same thing as neurons and brains. We use the mathematics and advanced computing tools to try to extract out what is this particular machine capable of doing. It's still experimental and that it doesn't have all of the notions of balance built in, but the mechanics are there. We're putting a stereo camera on the Cassie. It actually has two cameras, a uh, left and a right camera. And just kind of like human eyes, this is what allows us to see depth. So this is going to allow Cassie to not only see what's in front of it, but see how far away objects are. At the top here, you see Cassie walking around during an experiment with the stereo camera mounted on top. And this is kind of what you're seeing from Cassie's point of view. On the left here, is raw video footage of the camera on top of Cassie. And on the right here is uh, what's called point cloud data. So it's a 3D representation of what Cassie is seeing. So the colors are actually how far away objects are from Cassie. Red being closest and blue or purple being furthest away. Being able to put a camera onto Cassie opens up a whole new world of possibilities for these types of robots. There's nothing fundamentally that is any more complicated than, say, a mid-range motorcycle in terms of precision for manufacturing or complexity. It's really just being able to write down the answer of how does like a locomotion work. Once we understand that, it will be very much possible to create machines for a reasonable price that can go in our environments where we go. A lot of people are really concerned about robots for taking their jobs or feeling threatened by them. Automation, computers, robotics, all of these things are changing our economies. And we're gonna to have to change our society and how we handle that accordingly. Now the goal with agility is to have our robots be able to do more and more, to support the entire research community, to make hardware that is better and better every year and aim towards that world where robots are out in the environment. The first time we've seen it stand up, 
and kind of look around, get a grasp of what it is that we've been working on all these years to where we've gotten to now. Usually everybody's first reaction is they remember the bipedal robot that walked in Star Wars. You know, that was all supposed to be futuristic stuff, but now it's the future's here, I guess. <laughs> So a lot of people don't appreciate the complexity because they're so used to science fiction movies, they're so used to just watching toddlers and animals do it so naturally, walking around, that it seems like it should be easy. But when you really break the problem up into all of its different components, it's an incredibly complex and really difficult thing in order to get a robot to behave in a way that is even close to the performance, robustness, natural kind of elegance of humans walking around. With Cassie, we will be pushing the edge because what we want the robot to do is to perceive its environment as quickly as a human can do and then respond with the proper locomotor commands. Once the robots are as capable as a human, it's gonna be an easy call when there's a fire in a building and you have to make the choice, do you send in a human or do you send in a robot? If they're equally capable, you just send in the robot. And once they're that capable, I think they're gonna start doing more and more of the tasks that we don't want to do. Our world is built for humans, our buildings especially. Everything's designed for a typical human form, so it makes sense to have an engineered solution similar to that. We don't want it moving at the speed of a robot. It's going to be moving at the speed of life.